are listening to The Stick and Hack Show, a show about golf and life from a stick and a hack. Now, here is your host, Adam Grubb and Mike Ryan. All right, everybody, welcome in. It is The Stick and Hack Show. I'm your host, Adam Grubb. The hack, that's Mike Ryan, the stick. Mike, hello, how are you? Super, buddy. Uh, we got a big sh- we got a big show uh, today. Allison Johnson from the Gilly Group on the program, sports marketing agency from New Jersey, talking to us about marketing and the golf business and spotlighting a 20-year career of famous people and incredible golf experiences. Two of those things I know nothing about. <laughs> I've had incredible zero, go- incredible, golf zero experiences incredible golf experiences, <laughs> and I know no famous people. <laughs> So uh, that should be good for her uh, to be on the program today. Uh, the show brought to you by the phone caddy by Desert Fox Golf. Are you tired of your phone rattling around in the cup holder? Tired of your phone in your bag and the possibility of it breaking when you slam your club into the side of the bag after a chunked? Did you write this? Cl- Who wrote this? Uh, I did. Okay. Uh, Keep reading. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. I would love to. Uh, tired of your phone in your bag and the possibility. Oh, I see what you did there because I, I would hit the bag, the side of the bag with my club. You're really quick today. I like it. Appreciate it. Need quick access to your phone for a new friend? Oh, wait a minute. That would just be for me. Need quick access to your phone for GPS stats or quick responses to emails from the boss asking you for an update or to circle back around on that? If so, Phone Caddy is for you. Attaches easy and quickly to the cart and is safe and secure for your entire round. A proud member of the Stick and Hack Members Perk Program. Save money on your phone caddy today by becoming a member of Stick and Hack and getting the code on our member perks page. It is, in fact, that easy, Mike. Phone caddy by Desert Fox Golf, proud sponsor of Stick and Hack Show. You have one. I have I one. Do. They're fantastic. They are. They're very nice. They uh, are very convenient. And they they uh, they hit right up there on the uh, little uh, the little arm. Yep. Little they arm of the. Tra- uh, they travel easy. They're yeah. Easy to uh, put on and take off. they uh, the phone caddy is uh, for you if you're the guy with the <laughs> with the with the phone on the course, which I know some people hate, but let's be honest. It's 2021. We need to be connected, right? right? We need to have have a our pulse on things, and your phone is important to you. Absolutely. All right. Um. So well, let's talk a little bit about the business side of of uh, of golf. All right. Uh, Allison uh, Johnson from the Gilly Group will be on here a second sports marketing agency. Marketing in uh, golf has been around longer, sir, than you might think. So I'm going to tell you about it in the only way I can. You are? Yeah. Cool. I like it. <laughs> the, you're, you're spot on today. <laughs> you are spot on. Your drop-ins so far Thanks. have been amazing. I try. Uh, the invention of, in, in fact, I am a second away from pulling producer Shane into this <laughs> nightmare. <laughs> That's where we're at in this pro, pro process. Uh, the invention of sports marketing. Now, this is a history. So the longest running endorsement deal with a sports brand has been since 1923. It was signed by golfer Gene Sarazen and Wilson Sporting Goods. Sarazen was the brand's first member of the advisory staff and maintained a strong relationship with them until his death in 1999, showing the longstanding value of sports endorsements. 1923 is when the first sports endorsement started until his death in 1999. He would have been uh, 21. Who? Gene Sarazen. In 1923? Correct. Oh, how do you know that? Because he was born in 1902. (laughs) Okay. How do you know that? Just keep reading. (laughs) 1928. uh, In this year, Coca-Cola first partnered with the Olympics, and that deal continues today. 1928, Coca-Cola with the Olympics. In 1934, General Mills spotted a great opportunity for their cereal brand, Wheaties, in which they began to feature famous athletes on boxes. Now, this uh, went hand-in-hand hand with their proposed slogan, The Breakfast of Champions, and the first athlete was uh, American sportsman Lou Gehrig. So, oh, that, that actually... That, Genius. Well, I didn't realize that uh, The Breakfast of Champions was before the uh, champions were actually on the box. Yes. Oh, that's interesting. That's correct. You knew that? I did. Ugh, you're annoying me today. <laughs> 1936, uh, Adidas saw a chance to get in on the sports marketing game and grasp it with both hands. Founder Adolf Gassler noted that Jesse Owens was a shoe in for the 1936 Berlin Games. So he, oh, I get it, shoe in. So he gifted Owens with a free merchandise from <laughs> Adidas, making him one of the first spokesmen to receive products for free to be used for promotional purposes. I Jesse don't like o- the uh, the dad jokes in the, uh, <laughs> yeah, I know, in the copy I know. there. I like that. Um, the, uh, so Jesse Owens was the first 
uh, athlete to get uh, products for free, which is what happens now all the time. Right. Uh, it's something widely practiced today. Influencers re- receiving thousands of thousands of dollars of free products to try out and endorse at their own will. So Adidas uh, and Jesse Owens really started that that trend. In 1954, again, the history of sports marketing, Baseball Stadium Sportsman's Park has its naming rights sold to brewery Anheuser-Busch, becoming known as Bush Park, a first in the world of sports and advertising. What's more, in 1954, the very first issue of Sports Illustrated hit stands, providing brands with ample opportunity to advertise directly to sports fans through a sports publication. It's my beer choice, Bush Light. Bush Light is, and yeah. they were the first, um, the first naming rights in 1954. That's amazing. And, and there, were, there was probably 20 other milestones in sports marketing, but that just goes to show you how long sports have been a vehicle for marketing and for brands to get their, their, their brand out there, for athletes to endorse them, and, and the ways that, that brands were positioning themselves near sports. And in today's market, in today's space, it is everywhere, prolific, right? Oh, it's, yeah. I mean, you can't, you know, turn your head and you've got somebody shoving an athlete in your face about whatever. And, and marketing uh, and brands are, are marketing and sponsoring every sport. Right. A cornhole, for instance. Johnsonville Brats. Right. Have you seen those uh, <laughs> Cornhill guys? I have. Or corn, Cornhill. Cornhill? God, I'm stupid. Cornhole. Cornhole guys. Yeah. Uh, they, have, they have more logos on their chest than NASCAR drivers. Well. It's crazy. They don't exactly have like a, t, a big like lucrative TV deal, so they got to like. You don't know that. Okay. That you don't know. Oh, maybe. Cornhole has, has hit big. But <laughs> <laughs> logos on shirts are one thing, but the way these brands are positioning themselves with, right. with the different sports is, is something entirely different. Um, and the, with the Super Bowl, obviously every year that's the big story. What brands are going to be in the Super Bowl? Who's not in the Super Bowl? How much does it cost? Blah, 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 blah. But all of the, the brands that are attached to sports, you know them. You know, you know Rolex. You, you know Acura, Mercedes, those are all golf brands, right? right. Uh, you see them all, all the time. Uh, NASCAR, you've got Coca-Cola, you've got uh, TurboTax, you've got all, all of these, and they're synonymous with the uh, Pennzoil, uh, synonymous with the Indianapolis 500 for Correct. many, many years, the Rick Mears. These brands start to become uh, become their personalities. Uh, it's, it's a remarkable thing. Sports marketing, to me, is, is a topic that I could talk about forever. Clearly. <laughs> hey, write, write, that, nope. write that down for a, a, a show note from Mike. No one could tell. <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> do you want to conduct this next interview there, uh, Mikey? I'm good. Yeah, exactly. I'll be right here. Uh, you let me know when you need me. <laughs> All right. So uh, with that, then we bring in Allison Johnson from the Gilly Group. Allison is president and CEO of the Gilly Group. Allison, welcome to the Stick and Hack Show. How are you? I am doing well. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. It is uh, great to see you. Uh, sports marketing is one of those, and, and you've heard me talk for uh, eight minutes now about it, but I've, it's fascinating. And, and the entire space of marketing and advertising and how brands connect with, uh, with viewers and sports fanatics through their teams or through athletes is something that, that I have been excited to talk about. I'm going to give you your bio here for the listeners so they know that you know what you're talking about. You focus on sports marketing, event production, tournament management, and uh, hospitality as well as many other. You have been part of the Masters Tournament, the Northern Trust on the PGA Tour, Optishot Golf, uh, and now Stick and Hack. You have a, a lot of different things that you have your uh, your hands in. Prior to launching the Gilly Group in uh, 2015, you spent eight years as Senior Vice President of Marketing and Communications for Wyndham Worldwide, where you oversaw internal and external communications, media relations, branding, marketing, sports marketing, as well as the Wyndham Championship on the PGA Tour. That is quite an impressive resume. Um, the first question is how and why marketing? Why specifically sports marketing? Sure. So I thought that I wanted to get into the golf space um, as a sports psychologist. So I was going to go to go to Temple University for my master's in sports psychology. And, and that was my plan. But I, my first job out of college was as tournament director at New Jersey State Golf Association. And I quickly realized that I really found my my love in the business side of golf. So putting on tournaments, um, really figuring out who's making money, how they're making money, how they're spending money in the sport. Uh, really became a passion point for me. So instead of going full-time into sports psychology, I did that on the side for a bit 
until I went to the PGA championship at Balthus at all. And then I, I really started to sink my teeth into the tournament side, which was just awesome. That's one I stuck of, with that. And now here I am. That's one of those things when you go to your first tournament and you, you realize the, the size and the scale and all the people that, that are, that have to put that on. Um, you quickly said, Oh, this is, this is where I need, need to be. Now there's a lot of people that think that the only way to get into the, uh, the golf business is either working at a course uh, or selling equipment, being a you know equipment rep, which are incredible jobs, but there's a lot of there's a lot of other unique and interesting career choices to to get into golf. What are some of those? Well, really, in any area that you can think about having a career, there's an opportunity in golf. So whether it's legal or hospitality or HR, communications and branding. Um, now we are starting to see some really cool golf technology come out, whether it's AI or gamification. So really whatever your passion point is, if you have a love for the game and you like fast paced, moving quickly, never the same, um, the, the industry has so much to offer really in any area you can think of. Allison, you know, despite a, a global pandemic that we've been going through, the golf business really has had one of the best years on record, um, this last year, you know, how, how do you think the golf industry can take advantage of the momentum right now and sustain it into the future? Sure. So we've been very, very fortunate in the industry. You know, my spectator side of the business, not so much, unfortunately, but hopefully that will shift. But rounds have been, um, rounds played has been up. Rounds started for women. Women entering the game has been up dramatically. Um, I know for myself, I was playing between two to five times a week, which I've never done before, just so that I could have meetings because that was the only way that we could do it here in New Jersey. Um, and so equipment sales are up, products. So we really need to make sure that as an industry, we're capitalizing on that and not losing people who have just either come back to the game, started the game, or, or really have found that passion point for them. And so I think that's, that's an ongoing conversation for us, for sure. One of the things that we need to do is continue to figure out how can we make rounds a little bit faster so that when we do go back to normal life and we're working in the office and that kind of stuff, we still have the time to spend on the course. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> your, your point about uh, taking meetings on the golf course uh, has been something I've done for, I don't know, 15 years. Um, <laughs> Yeah, uh, let's just do the meeting on the golf course. <laughs> but now it actually it, it's uh, it's, it's not frowned, it's not frowned upon. Yeah. <laughs> um, the the height of golf is not just due to to the pandemic. It's due also to um, I think the way uh, as accessible as golf is now. There there people don't think it's accessible, but it it truly is. There's a lot of golf courses. You don't have to go to the nicest one in your neighborhood. You can play. There's several. Uh, uh, professionals now they're building golf courses that are nine holes only they are they're a smaller scale and a quicker scale um and and i think that you're seeing a younger crowd too utilize golf with top golf and some of the entertainment aspects five iron golf uh, the simulator uh, guys that were on our show a while back there's just more avenues for people to enter the game does that excite you as somebody who's been in the space for 15 20 years Absolutely. I think that we have done a disservice in the golf industry of making people think it wasn't accessible. Right. And there are courses that I'll play with business associates and people from the industry. And then I take my kids to the local municipal course because I'm not embarrassed if they're, you know, messing around or whatever. So there's a time and place for everything in golf. We go, we have a simulator in my garage. Um, one of the things that I love about the game is that it gives me an opportunity to teach my kids manners and etiquette and all that kind of good stuff. So, you know, I think that there's a place and a purpose for everything. So if I'm going for business, I'm going to go one spot. If I'm going to introduce the game to a group of women, we're going to do it differently. If I'm playing with my kids, they might hit five tee shots and mess around and putt twice. I don't care. Right. I just want them to have fun. Yeah. And so I think that's something we need to focus on in general. And I think that's, then it's okay too. the, the, the golf snobs and the purists, they, they've got to, they just got to get over it. I yeah. mean, let, let my kid hit uh, yeah, four mean, balls in the, in the fairway. You know, the, on this, the same topic, you know, Rory kind of hit on it um, recently in an interview that he did where he was talking about some of the stuff the USGA and the RNA are talking about doing, you know, and he really focused on the fact that we need to be focusing on how do we get more people into the game and keep them there. And it's not through more rules or making it more difficult for them to be able to play the game. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, let's talk about the logos on shirts for a second, Allison. So we we talk a lot about the multi million dollar business of of sports marketing and and these brands that pay athletes and, and to endorse their products. Uh, but in the golf space, we only see three or four logos. Right, the hat, the you got your uh, your uh, chest logo, then you got your your sleeve logo. But there's a lot that goes into that. It's not as easy just paying somebody uh, thirty thousand dollars a weekend to put your, their logo on your shirt. These are long term deals. A lot of times that, that these golfers and the top golfers are are utilizing. But it's those it's the the bottom 50, 150, 200 that really need those endorsement dollars to keep playing golf. We keep we don't think about that sometimes. We don't think about that other side of the endorsement. We think of Phil, Tiger, DJ, Rory, uh, all these guys that make millions of dollars a weekend just in endorsements. But it's the players that are trying to come up, make a career out of this. Those are the people that really need the dollars to keep playing the sport they love. Sure. So when you do a sponsorship deal, there are, there are a lot of different ways that you can do it. But in talking about the logo on the shirt and that kind of stuff, um, typically what will happen if you are a brand from a company looking to sponsor someone, um, one of the first things you're going to do is talk to players that you think fits your brand characteristics, right? So what are you looking for? What type of brand are you? Because if you are a, a monster energy, you're going to have a different look than say, you know, where I was at Wyndham Worldwide, which was very like family vacation, um, monster energy, a little more higher energy kind of a thing, right? So there's there's brand characteristics that go into it, but then you got to look at what other things are you getting with your deal? So are they going to do player appearances for you and talk to your audiences, whether that's your employees, your shareholders, your customers or clients, um, all the way down to when you're on site somewhere, what does that look like? How many impressions are you going to get from a media standpoint? So then the legal teams get involved and the marketing people get involved and communication people get involved. And then you've got to send your, you know, your apparel brands got to use the logo and does it look right? There's a lot that goes into it on the backside, but just as long as some of those deals can take and it, how, how, multifaceted they are. I remember being at the masters on Saturday night and I was sitting in the wheels up hospitality space. And one of my buddies was running around like a crazy person because he had just done a deal to do Bernhard Longer's hat for Sunday, just for Sunday, because he happened to be in between sponsors and he was really playing well. I, I forget where he might've even been leading. I don't remember, but I remember seeing my friend run around like crazy, trying to get the deal done because they needed to have that hat with that wheels up logo ready to go in the morning. So there are, there are situations where it's like, you know, luck and chance and it works out really well. And then there are others that are very, very tedious and there's a lot of due diligence and you really are making sure that it's step-by-step step the right thing. Do a lot of those guys uh, and and gals when they're when they're picking their um, their sponsors, do they want and need to have an affinity for the product or need to feel connected to the product? Or in some cases, as you're coming up in in uh, the professional ranks, will you take any money that comes your way? Like for instance, stick and act money. I think from a player perspective, you know, it's really expensive for these guys that are not winning and making a lot of money on tour. It is a very expensive endeavor to travel, to try to keep up, you know, even just to traveling alone, think of what that does on your own body when you're traveling right. in routine. Yeah. Right. So there's, there's a financial cost. There's a mental, emotional cost. You're sacrificing time with your family and other stuff you could be doing. So I think that that's a very different situation. So for the up and comers, they may take on products that they, may not necessarily use because they really do need that exposure and the money and the support. Um, I think the best deals are always done. And the ones that you see that have longevity are done with people and products that really do fit. And then there, it, it almost becomes like a family, right? You start to, you start to think of other opportunities for each other. How can you maximize the relationship and grow it bigger? And when someone feels authentically connected to your brand, I think it comes through very clearly in their interviews when they're speaking, when they're on the course, they're really making an effort because it's something they believe in. Yeah, that, uh, you know, that makes me think about, uh, you know, our own sponsors and how connected we are to them. I just actually <laughs> bought some Tosi, uh, yeah. Tosi Super Bites a minute ago yeah. and they were delicious. But yeah, it, no, um, it is important for some of these guys, uh, though, with their sponsors to truly believe in the product yeah. because Allison's right. You It, it brings a different sense of the uh, promotion to, to the product. And I will ask you though, is it like in the sponsorship game, 
is it the same as in the NASCAR or IndyCar, the game where it's more about the sponsors connecting with other sponsors, or is it truly they need to see the logo and that's their exposure, that's their impression, that's the that's where the the volume comes in their in their spend. I think it's going to really depend on the brand. I can tell you for when I was at Wyndham Worldwide, um, it was very much about our customers and bringing our customers on site to a fully branded Wyndham experience with talent that we really liked with, um, you know, branding everywhere. When people stepped on site at that event, you could really feel and experience the Wyndham brand. We had vacation stuff every, I mean, we, it was phenomenal. And so that was a very different situation. I think that there are certainly some clients, I had a client under Gilly Group where, you know, we did a smaller level sponsorship, but it gave us access to the, um, this entity's corporate hospitality, which was great because then I went in there and I'm making all different connections for the brand. So it really depends on the brand. And that's also going to give you a better idea as to the spend, right? The spend for getting into that corporate hospitality suite was very low. The spend for being a title sponsor and having that full immersive experience was not low. <laughs> right. So varying levels. I think those are the ones that people think about the most. They're just like yeah. these big title sponsors, but they don't realize like how they, they're these smaller deals that are in the background that they just, you just, you may not see it, but they're there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Allison Johnson from the Gilly group is the guest here on the stick and hack show. And Allison, we, I talked about earlier, you know, how big of a year golf had last year, but you know, where do you see being the biggest growth areas in the industry, you know, over the next few years? Um, I think the primary um, area of growth is going to be with women Um, with rounds played and with new people entering the sport, women were the largest segment. I think that, um, you know, let's face it in culture right now, women is the topic of discussion in a lot of ways. And so what I have said to people that I know is listen, we got to keep our fit in the door and knock it open now, because right now is the time Um, between the disparity of payment, both in sports as well as in corporate. I mean, there have been a lot of, before the pandemic, there were a lot of ongoing conversations, right? And so this is really a time where a lot of people are focusing their dollars and their marketing efforts on women in the golf space. And women are really getting the opportunity to do things that they haven't done before. There are a lot of different experiences that are out there right now, whether it's, you know, growing your personal brand and using golf for business or being introduced to the game, um, for the ladies is a program by Abby Leventhal that has done really, really well, um, getting new women into the sport and really letting them feel excited and engaged. Those types of programs are really important in getting women into the sport. And, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's the way that they're going to come in and we need to keep them there. It's exciting. It is exciting. And, and there's Absolutely. so many different ways for, we talked about the different ways people can get involved, but women specifically, you don't just have to be an LPGA player. You can uh, be an executive. You can get into in, as a, as a your local pro. You can get into golf course maintenance. You you have women have the same amount of ability to get into golf as as anybody else, and it's exciting as a father of three girls to to know that those opportunities are there if they want them uh, today is is very exciting i know that that's it's something that that you are passionate about you have uh your entire circle of friends uh that that are working towards that to be more inclusive to to women in in sports but women in golf uh it's it's commendable and, and necessary so congrats first of all just on being one of the people one of the many people that are that are moving that moving that forward yeah i mean that i've well thanks go ahead allison what I would just, what I would encourage, so you talk about having daughters, what I would encourage is ask them to play because women don't just go and, and we really need to feel welcomed and wanted there. And so guys are constantly, Hey, you want to play golf? And even if they've never played, they're like, yes, yeah, sir. Women don't do that. So they, they need to feel wanted there. Yeah. I asked uh, my oldest to play golf and she said, can we do it in my room? <laughs> Cause then I'll, then I'll play. <laughs> Can we, can we just do it? I'll get you a simulator. Right, can we just do it right here and uh, me not have to move more than five feet? Then Ocul- I'll play. You like buy an Oculus. And then she can do like the virtual. Oh God, the virtual. Exactly, golf game. exactly. Unless it's on her phone, there's no chance she's playing golf. But uh, it's a good, it's a good suggestion. Um, let, let me ask you this: the the golf industry in general, not just for women, but just in general, how does it make it more welcoming? for those that are either been away from the game for a while or for those that are new to the game and want 
something. Uh, they, they, they need that kind of little push, that little nudge to, to start playing golf and understand, hey, you don't have to be great. I mean, I'm living proof of that. You don't have to be great to enjoy the game, and you don't have to ever really quite get better. You can still make friends and be, be outside, enjoy the game, enjoy the sport. How does golf as a sport make it more welcoming for people? I think really at the end of the day, it's about getting people um, feeling empowered and confident. And I know that for me, one of the first things that I like to do is take a lesson because it just gets me feeling a little more confident. Even if it's just, you know, at the local course and you're going to go once and you know that just to get your legs under you, um, there are so many different beginner programs and clinics. And just having that baseline confidence really makes a big difference. But the thing is, you don't even have to leave your house now. Between golf simulators, there are online apps where you can take lessons. There are so many different ways if you want to start playing or that you feel like you've been away and you want to get back to it that you can. It just takes a little bit of research. Um, every state has a, has a resource, whether it's their New Jersey PG. New Jersey, listen to me, I'm like... New Jersey PGA. There's a whole other um, world out there, Allison, that oh isn't gosh. New Jersey and the East Coast, okay? I know, but I was on the I was on the board. They're, you know, close to my okay, heart. But every okay. state has a PGA section right. um, that you can go to as well as a state golf association. And so that's a really great place to start if you want to get into the sport or if you have kids and you want them to get in. Operation 36 is another phenomenal teaching program that – um, you can go online and look up locations there, but it's also got a little bit of reward and gamification. So kids tend to like it a lot. So there's so many options. Do you like top golf? Do you think that's good for, for the game right now and for getting people involved and, and excited about golf? Um, I think it's fun. I think it's uh, a great way to introduce people to swinging a club. Uh, for serious golfers, it's like it's more of a bar restaurant fun thing to do. Um, listen, anything right now that exposes people to the game and gets the club in their hands, I think is a plus. I've always and it's com- a lot of fun. I've always compared top golf as kind of like uh, the bowling of golf. The hell does that mean? It's like a bowling alley. That's like a anybody goal. can just show up. Oh yeah, you oh, have I to see. be. You don't have to have equipment. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to like right. really know anything. You can just show up and start <laughs> swinging a club, and then maybe you know. I think the advantage of it is that at some point. I think it, it sparks people's interest, especially and in what we've seen in the last year talking about the pandemic is, you know, it's kind of been that gateway for people. Well, it's no different than any other yeah. um, thing that brings you back to golf. It's that one shot. Yeah. So somebody goes to Top Golf, they hit one shot right. pure as the driven snow. And now they're 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 coming back to the game. They're going pro. Right, right. They're, they're like, I could go pro. This is yeah. easy. <laughs> this this game this game is is uh, very easy. The uh, the marketing of Top Golf uh, is specific to hey, just come in and and play. Um, have you been surprised by how quickly and it is? It's been rel- relatively quickly. They have grown uh, to fifty eight, sixty locations around the country. They have done tremendously well. Um, no, I am not surprised. It's fun. They have good food. Everybody loves to be able to be entertained while they're having a drink, right? There's stuff for kids to do, and and you're swinging golf clubs. I think it's I think it's brilliant. Allison, my last question, um, and you talked about women in golf a minute ago. Uh, there are some powerful and amazing women that are making a huge impact on the game of golf right now. Um, you know who are who are some of your favorites and why? Um, I would say from a media perspective, watching Amanda Balionis and Hallie Ledbetter um, from the social and broadcast perspective has been fantastic. I think they get a lot of people excited and energized around the game. Um, then, you know, we talked about Abby. There's a group called Gruder Golf that works alongside with the Five Iron Guys. I didn't realize you had them on. That's great. Yeah. Um, so Gruder Golf, again, is, is really fun. These things that are focused on making the sport fun and less stuffy are really making an impact for all of us. And listen, I love the traditional, the etiquette. I love the formality of a lot of it, but there's, like I said, time and place for that stuff, right? And not everybody likes that. Um, so Gruder's killing it. And then, of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't say Leslie Ann Wade, um, who is my business partner in White Tea Partners, which is a golf-specific um, strategic PR and communications firm. She was the head of CBS Sports uh, Communications for decades and then ran all of Nick Faldo's stuff around the globe, and she's tremendously talented. Uh, went to my high school before I did, so also a New Jersey girl. Very nice. But, you know, really smart, talented women in the industry. And there are, I mean, there's countless others that I could mention. 
And the nice thing is we all really support one another, which is really great. When you, when you see these other women doing good things, it's a nice, like, I see you. Good job. Yeah. Which is I think great. that's huge. Especially when we talk about trying to get more women into golf is if they see women that are already successful and visible in golf, it's, that's huge. In golf, uh, and in, in any landscape of, of yeah. the game. Um, it, but does it frustrate you? And I don't want to, I don't want to turn this to, to the negative town here, but um, forgive me. It's what I do. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Does it annoy you and frustrate you that they are not, and you yourself included, not celebrated the same way that successful men in golf or in sports are celebrated? So what I would say to that is I have a career that gives me such fulfillment and gratitude that for me, it's not really about, I don't really care what anybody else thinks about that for me, um, to be honest, um, because I get to do what I love. Right. And how many, I mean, my kids and I were joking, writing out our list for the lotto. My son was like, you would still work every day, wouldn't you? And I was like, I totally would. I love what I do. So I don't, I don't necessarily care if I'm getting like, Hey, I'll think great job. Right. I mean, that's always nice, but I know a whole lot of men who are miserable in their everyday jobs. So I would trade nothing for what I'm doing. Right. She's talking about producer Shane specifically there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Shane, I would never do yes. that to you. <laughs> uh, that's good. That's um, well, Allison, uh, I, I would tell you this, the, the marketing and the sales aspect of golf is fascinating of sports in general. Um, there's so many different things about it that I don't think people know. There's so many stories, so many people behind the scenes, so many things from, from uh, Gene Sarazen becoming the first uh, truly paid uh, product endorser that uh, in, in, in the golf space all the way to uh, today's uh, how did sponsors continue holding on to their golf sponsorships, even with no fans there? You know, what was that whole thing like? Uh, there's so many stories that Stick and Hack has decided to uh, launch our own podcast with you, Allison Johnson of the Gilly Group and Stick and Hack in a partnership uh, with a new show called Business of Golf. And uh, that show will be premiering uh, in, a, in uh, March of this year, uh, hosted by you and, um, well, me. So, because God forbid. I'm excited. God forbid. I don't, have, I, don't have, I don't have something that I can't, uh, I can't talk on. I'm so. way more excited about <laughs> the fact that she's going to be on that show. Than right. You. I know. I, I think most are. <laughs> Uh, no, Allison, we're very excited about that. It's called Business of Golf, and where we're going to talk about uh, how money is spent, why money is spent, and uh, and the true people behind the business of this sport, and and all the way from how did Top Golf start, and the and to uh, the small little details of a corporate sponsorship uh, during a during a tournament, as well as the many careers. And it's a show that you can listen to if you want to get into golf. We're going to be talking about, uh, I mean, even fashion, golf fashion, right? We're going to be talking about uh, a, a host of topics and people on the show. Allison's Rolodex, if I can use a term from 1989, is <laughs> much larger than uh, than ours. Does anybody have a Rolodex? I, I, producer Shane. <laughs> <laughs> he, he dusts that off every now and then to, to call people for sure. a new, new gig. Sure. Um, the but we're very excited about it and and the the guests that we already have slated for that are, are going to be uh, very 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 cool to to talk to and we look forward to so business of golf part of the stick and hack podcast network hosted by allison johnson and the gilly group and uh me myself adam grubb from stick and hack so uh thank you very much for agreeing to be a part of that and we look forward to bringing that to the masses here very very soon Fantastic. I'm very excited. So thanks, guys. All right, Allison, thanks, uh, we're going to go away for a second. We're going to do the takeaway, and then uh, you want to play the game with us? It's uh, in or out uh, of our foursome. You want to do that? You betcha. All right, we'll be back in just a I second. Do. Uh, time for the takeaway, Mike. Uh, there's a lot to, to unpack there from Ooh. Allison. Um, your takeaway from the conversation. I'm trying to narrow it down to one, but I think the one thing that um, I took away from that is uh, golf has a huge opportunity right now to take advantage of the momentum that's going on with um, how, how much easier it is to play golf and um, you know, the way really in the last year with the pandemic as horrible as it's been, it's been kind of one of the, the lone bright, bright spots, at least from what I've seen. Um, and, you know, I'm just really excited to see if the industry can take advantage of the momentum. And one of the, you know, one of the things she talked about is bringing more women into the game bringing more minorities into the game, bringing, bringing in more people 
to this game that I think everybody loves and I know I love so much. Um, I think just it's a huge opportunity that the, the business of golf has right now to, to take advantage of the, the popularity right now. My takeaway uh, is pretty simple, um, and that's the love of the game doesn't dwindle or die even if you're in the game. So her uh, excitement for golf uh, and her excitement for, for the sport, but also the business side and everything that happens is still there. That twinkle is still there after 15 uh, years or so in, in the space. Um, but also her resume showcases all the different positions, jobs, and, and availability for people in the game of golf, um, in, in sports and marketing specifically. Uh, there's just so many opportunities out there for anybody to change careers. And let's say you are in that, in that rut of, and you're, you're uh, nine to five and your job sucks and you're an accountant, you're a te- you're whatever, you're a lawyer, <laughs> whatever you are, right? You're right. A, a, a mid-level uh, producer of a, of a podcast, poorly listened to podcast. Huh. <laughs> doesn't matter get into golf because there's a lot of opportunities there yeah. and i think that that was my key takeaway is the opportunity is there for so many people and so many different uh, different things just through golf alone and that is uh, very very exciting here for the uh, staff and crew of stick and hack absolutely uh all right now we go into uh, our game it's in or out allison we welcome you back into the stick and hack show allison are you there no thanks. Um, all right, Perfect. so the game is in or out, and uh, basically it's very simple. We have a uh, we have a golf foursome. It's uh, you, Mike, and myself. We have a uh, an open spot, and uh, we can pick from this list of ten. Uh, and it's in or out for each person. Okay, so we're not trying to fill our foursome. It's just would this person uh, work with our foursome uh, and their business tycoons? Okay, so I tied it into right. the to the topic of of the show, business tycoons. Yep. I'll just wait for the applause to die down. It's great. It's a great, it's a great uh, topic. Thank you. Well done. Uh, in or out. All right. Number one on the list, Jeff Bezos. Uh, is he like Lex Luthor now? Basically, I feel like that's who he's turned into. That's a different list and a different game. I know, but I just that's just an observation on my part. Is he's he like, in or he's out? Completely bald right, now. Right, he's, he's like out. ripped. All right, he's out. He's out. Uh, Allison, in or out? Put that in. In. All right. Uh, he's the richest man in the world. He's going to pay for everything. Yeah, that's so true. much to learn from him. Yeah, yeah and I would say yeah. Yeah, yeah. and the connections. Uh huh. Um, all right, uh, Bill. Ga- or, no, I'm sorry, Lauren Powell Jobs. Uh, I'm going to go with in. Lauren Jobs. In. In. Her last name's Jobs. Exactly. End of story. Exactly. Bill Gates. <laughs> say it. I'm going to go out. Thank you, out, <laughs> Allison. I'm, t- I'm taking every single one of these. You know how much we could learn? Yeah, I'd be selling sponsorships like this. No, it's, you can't. You have to do it on your gut instinct of can I play golf with that person? Bill Gates is out. I, yeah, Bill. Bill's just. I oh, man, he's awkward. The, yeah, there's a couple like guys that just like he would not know what to do on a golf course. There's he a couple guys at the club like like Bill Gates, not with his money, but just his personality. <laughs> uh, and I stay away from this as far as I can. Right, right. Uh, Alice Walton. Uh, in. Okay, Alice Walton. In. Out. Out for you? Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. yeah. If, we're, if it was Alice Target, I'm in. Alice Walton? No. Uh, is there an Alice Target? No. <laughs> uh, did Elon, you just make that up? E- yeah, I did. Okay. Uh, Elon Musk? Uh, Elon's in for me. Yeah. Allison's going to say... I'm she's fascinated gonna, by Elon I Musk. am. I'm going to say a problem. <laughs> yeah. All right. This game sucks then. That's not the, <laughs> the point is... Uh, I, I would say... I say out on Elon Musk. I'm totally in Because well, he brings some robot... Because he brings some robot club and get weird on the first tee and he's like, look what I look what I invented eight seconds ago. But he might give you a Tesla after you're done. <laughs> All right. He's in. My apologies. <laughs> you're damn right. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Uh, Listen, I think he's, he's not my type of person normally, but... Who? Elon? Sorry, you're totally breaking up for me. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, we, we, we'd moved past Elon Musk. We'd already I, like your, I think you're <laughs> delayed for me all of a sudden. That's Sorry. Fine. All right, I think fine. we're, I think we're back. Uh, all right, uh, Mark Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg's out. Zuckerberg, Allison? I'd still go in. Holy cow. <laughs> we, can't, we can't get a no out of this girl. Uh, well, I think we know where I stand on this. Only for, only for this golf game. <laughs> <laughs> so, She's like, I'm not hanging out with Z- him afterwards. Yeah, Zuckerberg's, Zuckerberg's out. <laughs> Let me be clear. Uh, Larry Page. <laughs> I'm out on Larry Page. I'm sorry. Really? Yeah. I'm in for Larry Page. He's got yeah. a fascinating story. I like to hear his story. Yeah. L- Larry Page is fascinating. Right. Allison, Larry Page? In. Yeah. Shocking. 
Uh, Jacqueline, <laughs> Jacqueline Mars. Mars bar. See, I, yeah, I know. I know, I know. I, okay. I just, I, yeah, she's it. She's going to bring candy. Really? Sure. Think okay. about all the, I mean, if you're, you're going to have Elon Musk bringing a Tesla, I want a, a big bowl of candy. <laughs> Can she even play golf at this point? I don't point? care. Like bring me candy. years old or something. Hey, we're inviting her. That's how we get women to play. That's right. All right, Mike. I'm in. Inclusive. I'm in. Thank I'm you. In. I'm, in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. I'm in. Uh, Warren Buffett. In on Warren Buffett for sure. Okay. Warren Buffett is in. Allison, Warren Buffett. In. All right, Warren Buffett's in for me as well. Nice. All right, um, last one. Uh, this is Business Tycoons in or out? Uh, Producer Shane. Out. Out. He's in. <laughs> Y'all are the worst. Golf is supposed to be inclusive. Right, right up until Producer Shane. Except for Producer Shane. That's, when, that's when that list. I just can't do it. That's when that list stops. I can't do it. I'm going to do it. Uh, Allison Johnson of the Gilly Group. Uh, you visit her on uh, social media at Gilly Group or gillygroup.com. Allison, uh, thank you so much. Look forward to doing Business and Golf Podcast with you soon. You're an amazing person. Appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we'll talk to you soon. Uh, there she goes. Allison Johnson okay. of the, uh, so uh, much, the Gilly Group on the Stick and Hack Show. Uh, Mike, thank you so much. Proud of you. You enjoy yourself. And, Proud of you, uh, buddy. And have a great week. All right. All right. Peace all right, out, guys. See you later. Okay. We're done. This has been the Stick and Hack Show. Go to stickandhack.com to become a free member of the world's greatest golf club without the course.